new city. And so now I put two and two together. It looks like they told me three months ago a cyclone came through here and caused some damage. Um, Ciclono or Terreno, uh, whatever they said. Uh, so they didn't call it a hurricane, but it was the same storm, Hurricane Ian, I believe, that uh, came up the coast of Florida and destroyed Fort Myers. Well, it didn't destroy it, but it did some pretty good damage. And on its way up there, the storm also got pretty intense over here. Caused some damage here in Las Terrenas. And uh, a lot of down palm trees in the whole Samana Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, I did not see any damage like that. And I think it's pretty uncommon for these parts. For such a powerful storm like that to hit. Because last time I was here, everything was in pristine condition. But yeah, it definitely did some damage. The uh, hurricane, I think it was Hurricane Ian. I don't know, one that went up the Gulf side of Florida, the east coast of Florida, and had a direct hit. I think just south of Fort Myers. So America wasn't the only one that got hurt. It was down here and I think, well, in the Caribbean as well. So it probably hit some other Caribbean islands, like uh, Cuba, I think is what they were talking about mostly. Haiti, I mean, it wasn't like destructive, destructive, but it did some pretty good damage here because this used to be in really good condition. And here I'm probably walking on exposed nails. That's too bad. I didn't hear anything about that in the news. Well, what was a food park here in Las Terrenas is currently closed. I guess due to the hurricane. Turns out when you're walking on the beach and it starts raining, it's not so bad because you just might see a rainbow. Wow. Oh yeah. That's a good one. You got this guy flying in a little airplane up there. So the weather must not be so bad. Either that or he's a bad pilot because, uh, well, that's part of flying is knowing the weather and looking into weather before you go up in the air. So my guess is the wind's not gonna get too strong and this, uh, this weather's gonna pass. So I think I'll just stick it out instead of going back to the hotel. My hotel's a little far from the beach, uh, kind of at, at the edge like the entrance, where there's a sign that says the uh, City of Gods, Ciudad de Dios. So, rather than taking a, a long and, well, rather expensive motor taxi ride, it's about 100 pesos back there. So around $200, or $2 each way, but I'm gonna eventually wanna come back for food, I suppose, so that would be a $4 round trip. And it's kind of on the edge of edge of the city and there's not much over there. So if I were to get there, I wouldn't have much to do. So I'm gonna stick it out. The rain is on the lighter end. So yeah. Just gonna enjoy it and get some cool pictures. So in order to preserve the uh, beach here in Las Terrenas, they've got this rock wall held in place with some metal ties. And it looks like it's been serving the purpose quite well. I mean, uh, everything is kind of, you know, held up. Everything's intact here after Hurricane Ian. So, yeah. For those of you who didn't know, Hurricane Ian, Ian did damage in parts other than Florida. Here in the Caribbean, specifically the Dominican Republic. Oh yeah. Kind of a cool sight actually. Anyhow, so one thing about here, this is kind of dangerous, stuff sticking out here, but I have shoes on right now, and I guess 
I'd rather get scratched and bleed than get wet. No, that's a stupid idea. All right, let's see if we can plan this, time this right, pop up when we need to. All right, so here in the Dominican Republic, one of the most precious things, oh yeah, that's coming. Here in the Dominican Republic, one of the most precious things that makes this place so amazing is that it's not, okay, okay, yep. It is not commercialized. Like in a lot of Latin countries, it's pretty commercialized as far as, you know, food and chains, like restaurants, sit down places, okay. And, you know, Mexico, Colombia, like they've got lots of chains. And here, the only chain that comes to mind is Bon, which B-O-N is the ice cream chain. And I kind of like the place. I mean, it's convenient because you get to... Uh... Oh, shit. Okay, okay. I did it. All right, we're good. Ice cream chain. But as far as like restaurants, even gas stations, like, I mean, people sell fuel in empty uh, beer bottles. Like in the small, small towns where there's no gas stations. Oh my gosh, that was so close, but it still didn't touch me, and I just made it. I'm free. All right. Wow. Wow, that was good. Come to doggy. So it's actually really, really refreshing because you just you deal more directly with the people, and the people that are, you know, the. The duenos or the owners of the businesses that actually have a passion in what they're doing. So you get a lot better service. It's a, it's a huge difference that kind of just like struck me. I didn't even put two and two together until recently. But not being commercialized. I'm just getting away from it all. Capitalism, right? Which it's got its good things and bad things, just like everything. Just like everything else. But here, it's, it's, it just it really stands out to me as of recently. But you know, of course, when you get into touristy areas, you'd be like, well, what are you talking about? There's bars and restaurants and hotels everywhere. Well, yeah, that's true, but they're also independent, most of them. And it's only in the tourist parts. So, the rainbow, not as big as it once was, but it's still here. The rain never did get too strong. Okay, so back to this whole, so where do you eat, right? If it's not commercialized and you don't have these restaurants, you know, at first it's kind of a, a shock, like, okay, well, what do I do for food? Well, you just go to a comedor, is what it's called, or a cafeteria. And they're either gonna have like a buffet style with rice, beans, uh, chicken, beef, pork, and you choose what you want, or fish, and you eat something that had already been prepared, which is not my preference. I like a fresh cooked meal. That sometimes can be a little more difficult to find. I've come to love fried chicken, lots of fried chicken around here, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, chicken wings are popular. Yeah, lots of chicken. Chicken and fish, I'd say, are like the two most popular things here. You don't see too many hamburgers, but you will find them uh, in like, around parks or like uh, street food is what I call it. We got like a station in the, uh, in the different streets. You know, around the parks usually or where there's a lot of people that hang out in the evenings. You can get burgers for like $2. But uh, other than that, go to a comedor. Oh, go to a comedor and the people here know how to cook. Like they're really good chefs. So you just tell them what you want and they'll prepare it for you. Pretty much your options are usually rice, plantains are the most popular sides, mashed potatoes has become a popular side, and surprisingly for breakfast, which I'm not accustomed to, but hey, I love mashed potatoes. I'll eat them any time of day. Just mashed potatoes and eggs, eh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Mashed potatoes and maybe some sausage. But yeah, you tell them what you want, 
and I'll make it for you. Doggies. Doggies. Hey. You guys seem pretty friendly. Your friends must have told you how I fed them the other day on the beach. Yeah. They ate that whole chicken, they ate that whole head of fish. Crunch, crunch, crunch. So when you got chains and fancy restaurants everywhere, and that's your only option to go out to eat, everything just kind of feels a little bit different. It feels less authentic. There, it feels like there's a barrier between the people and it's just hard to explain exactly, but there's a, a more genuine feeling when you go to these, these comedores or cafeterias and you just kind of eat with the people. It's like you're just kind of in the world eating rather than in a fancy place at your own table where there's like a, a bubble around you and you don't want to be bothered by anyone. It's just kind of like everybody's there and enjoying themselves in a kind of a community, communal way. So that's what makes the, the non-commercial part of the Dominican special. Now, I do like going to a nice restaurant to sit down and not be bothered from time to time. And here you can do that particularly in the, the tourist towns of Las Terrenas. Uh, Las Terrenas, of course, Punta Cana. Um, maybe the capital, yeah, in uh, Zona Colonial. Those are the only three places I can think of that are like that here in the, the Dominican Republic. Oh, and of course, Cabarete and Sosua. Okay, so here in Las Terrenas, it's literally like a 50-50 ratio of gringos to locals. So the vibe is much different, right? Like the locals here kind of learn from the gringos. And for example, in, in cities where there's, you know, it's not touristic and you're just kind of uh, passing by observing how the locals live, where nobody visits, for example, uh, a place like Nagua, Nagua Dominican Republic, or even Samana. Of course, it's getting more touristic there. But uh, what you'll notice is that in the in those parts, you know, everybody's saying hi to each other, saludo, uh, greeting people. But here, people kind of look away, like uh, the gringos do. You walk past them, and they kind of look down and. They don't want to acknowledge or say, you know, anything at all. Just get on with their day. So, it kind of takes away from the experience a bit. I mean, it's still very comfortable. It's a beautiful beach. And you got lots of nice places to eat. But it kind of takes away from it in that aspect. Because it's actually a really warm feeling when you have this just happy community that knows everybody. And they communicate with everybody. And it's just, everything's very transparent. And I learned that talking to my friend in uh, Santa Domingo, the local, the, that, that word transparent. And I think that's like the perfect way to put it, is that things are more transparent. You kind of know what everybody's up to, their mood, and if they're not saying hi to you, well, they must be having a bad day. But also, of course, in a touristy place, like any touristic place, you know, money is, the main reason people are here so there's less less of that just genuine hey how's your day going kind of vibe but you still get it here it's just not as common oh, it looks like our friend here we got in a fight with somebody hey gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> 